Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating an animated voxel effect in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based, and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. And we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, there's a link below for a free two month trial for the first 1000 people that will give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. This tutorial was requested by quite a few people on our Facebook group who wanted to know how to create something like this effect by Mark Malta. I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can find this and check out Mark's other work. He's got some really cool stuff up there on his Instagram page. Okay, let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. Okay, so the first thing we need is a shape to fill up with our voxel effect. And you could use a logo or pretty much any mesh you like, but we're going to go with text. So let's head up here and bring in a Mo text. And we'll keep it nice and simple and we'll just use a big old X. And we'll set the alignment to middle. And we want it to be nice and thick, so let's bold that guy up. And you could just use a thicker font, but I think we'll stick with good old Sego UI. And we want to thicken this up in this direction as well. So we'll head down here and crank up the depth. And we don't need this as live text anymore, so we'll convert this into a mesh. Let's right click and we'll choose current state to object. And that's given us this new object, which we might have to drill down a few levels. And here's our new mesh. So we'll take that guy out and get rid of this other stuff. And now we need to pick an object we can clone a bunch of times to fill up our X with. And you can use anything you like, but we're going to go with a simple cube, which is way too big at the moment. So let's shrink this down to maybe two centimeters squared. Okay, so let's make loads of these with some help from the MoGraph cloner. And we'll hold down Alt when we bring that in, so it's applied to our cube as a parent. Then over to the Object tab, we're going to change the mode to Grid Array, which arranges our cube clones into a grid. But we don't see them right now because they're too far apart. So let's just bring these values down, so our grid is about the length and width of our X. And we'll just hit the middle mouse button to switch to the top view, so we can get this close to the middle of our X. And about there looks good. So let's head over to the front view and we'll make sure that's in the center of our X vertically as well. And let's just add another row of clones in the Y direction. And we could probably bring this slightly closer as well. That looks good. Let's also change the mode from per step to endpoint. And because we're going to make loads of clones, we should probably change the instance mode to multi instance, which keeps things running nice and fast. Okay, let's head back to our perspective view. And now we're ready to fill our X with these cubes. So we'll try 30 in the X axis, 20 in the Y, and 30 in the Z axis. And I don't think that's quite enough cubes to fully fill this. So we'll add a few more. And we could also get a performance boost if we switch the viewport mode to bounding box. Then we'll tweak these numbers until we have enough cubes to evenly cover our X. Okay, that looks about right. So how do we mask these clones to the shape of the X? One way we could do that is with our cloner selected, we'll head back here and bring in a volume effector because we want our clones to adopt the shape or volume of our mesh. Then we need to go to the effector tab where we can take our X mesh and use it as the volume object, which doesn't seem to do too much. But if we go to the parameter tab and turn on visibility, our clones disappear. So let's see if they're just being masked inside our X. If we hide that, still no clones. And I think this is because our volume effector has a negative scaling value enabled here by default. 
So if we change that value to one instead, our clones retain their original size and they're now filling the volume of our X. And now comes the fun part. We're going to add some animated noise to make these clones look a bit more interesting. So again, with our cloner selected, we'll go back to our MoGraph menu and this time we'll use a shader effector. And we're going to add some noise to the scale of our cubes. So in the parameter tab, we'll make these super tiny. So let's try negative 0.99. And that's about as small as we can make them without shrinking them into nothing. And now we can add our noise for some variation. Let's go to the shading tab and we'll click here and bring in a noise shader, which has started to affect our clones. So let's refine our noise by clicking into this. And I think changing the noise type to turbulence will give us a cool look. And we might lower the octaves to one and scale the noise up to 350%, which seems to have killed that noise effect. But if we increase these cycles, we should get an interesting pattern. So now all we need to do is animate this. And our scene is 72 frames long at the moment, which at 24 frames a second is three seconds long. So we can make our animation loop by first increasing the animation speed. So it does actually animate. And then we need our noise to loop every three seconds. So we just need to type three into here. So let's hit play and see what we get. And I think it's looking pretty cool, but it's kind of slow. So I think we need to cache the animation, which is usually a good idea to do before rendering anyway. So we'll right click on our cloner, then down to the MoGraph tags, we can bring in a MoGraph cache tag. And we want to cache all 72 frames. Then all we need to do is hit bake and we'll let it do its thing. And now if we play this back, it should be much faster because it's reading from the disc and not having to do those calculations anymore. And that's looking pretty cool. So have a play around with this setup and see what cool voxel effects you can come up with. If you make anything cool, you can post your work on our Facebook group or tag us on Instagram. As usual, you can download the project file at the link below and you can grab the final render ready Octane project file for this tutorial and all of our other tutorials on our Patreon page. And before we go, I just wanna say a big shout out to this month's patrons, you guys are the best. And we couldn't make these tutorials without your support. Okay, that's it for now, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.